Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. But I think we can all agree that the important thing is that we together ensure that there is a Labour government that looks after the most vulnerable people in our society, Mr Speaker, and that the Tories, the Tories who are scum, who are scum, Gum, Mr Speaker, stop being in charge of our country. And instead, Mr Speaker, it is people like me who left school at 16 because they were pregnant and have no qualifications and, quite frankly, aren't very bright. But the important thing, Mr Speaker, is that we, people like me, are in charge because we are the future of the left, Mr Speaker. Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of The Jolly Heretic. Now, today I would like to talk about what I like to call the Rayner effect. And the Rayner effect is something which I discuss in uh, some detail in my new book, which has been recently published with J.O.A. Rayner Hills Esquire, The Past is a Future Country, The Coming Conservative Demographic Revolution. And the Rayner effect is the fact that the left are becoming stupider and stupider and stupider, such that in the UK at the moment, the one of the leading members of the Labour Party, the deputy leader of the Labour Party, is Angela Rayner. Uh, Angela Rayner is a manifestly low IQ woman who, uh, le- who got pregnant at 16, uh, who in her early 40s is already a grandmother, uh, who left school at 16 with no qualifications, who was brought up by a family where the mother couldn't really read, and so she used to end up getting food poisoning and things from eating the wrong things. Um, that is the future of the left. The left are getting stupider and stupider and stupider while the right are getting I'm talking about the native left here while the right are getting more and more and more intelligent and that is one of the most interesting findings I think of our book The Past is a Future Country The Coming Conservative Demographic Revolution now why is this happening well I've looked in detail in other videos so you can go and refer to those at the general process which has got us to a point of dysgenics, which has got us to a point whereby IQ is going down. We know IQ is going down, and it's going down for genetic reasons. Uh, We have data on the fact that the percentage of populations uh, with alleles that are indirectly associated with uh, high IQ has gone... um, has gone down uh, across three generations. Um, So we know this is for genetic reasons. Uh, We know that IQ scores, despite the Flynn effect, which you may have heard of, um, IQ scores are actually uh, going down. Reaction times, which are a correlate of IQ, the longer your reaction times are, the stupider you are. Reaction times are getting longer. There are various other measures that that, that we have looked at and I have looked at in other videos. So we are definitely becoming less intelligent Uh, There are reasons for this, Uh, obviously. uh, One of them is simply that that there's there's some sort of dysphoria that seems to be reached when you have a very high level of civilization and you, 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 you don't have high mortality salience and the result of this is that people stop being religious and the religion tends to promote um, having lots of children and in the absence of religion you have no desire to have lots of children and to pass on your genes and so you simply have a a sort of dysphoria and you become highly materialistic and you rationalise everything and this includes having children. Uh, Another reason simply could be that we're supposed to be exposed to high levels of mortality salience that's our evolutionary niche. If we're not then um, suddenly we start thinking about the meaning of life and we become depressed and so on and so we stop having children. Uh, another reason um, is that um, we have um, a feminism which means that women who are more intelligent will tend to dedicate their 20s and indeed their 30s to their careers and to their education and will therefore limit their fertility whereas lower IQ people will just have lots of children because they're instinctive and uh, because they can't stop themselves having children. Another reason is the contraception which means that more intelligent people are better able to limit their fertility. Uh, there are various other reasons but the point is that this is definitely happening and uh, as we chart in the book, we are definitely becoming less intelligent, and it looks like we will. Um, we lost something like twenty IQ, fifteen to twenty IQ points between eighteen eighty and the year two thousand, and it looks like we will lose another fifteen points by the end of the century. So we will be at an IQ of eighty five. But there are interesting political differences, though, in what is going on, which is that although yes, IQ is going down, people are becoming less intelligent. Uh, this varies according to your political viewpoint and also according to how religious you are. Now, whether you are liberal or whether you are conservative, this is highly heritable. Um, according to the data that we have examined in the book, it's something like 0.6, maybe even 0.7 heritable. So whether you are 
liberal or conservative is strongly genetic. How intelligent you are, this is even more heritable. This is about 0.8 heritable. So how intelligent you are is strongly genetic. And what you find in the data is that basically um, liberalism is the great sterilizer and conservatism is the great fertilizer. So if you look at if you look at well it's not quite as simple as that but if you look at um it's uh, 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 people who are if you control for it and if you look at simply religious people and conservative people um they are breeding more than are people who are liberal and people who are atheistic. Um and not only that if you control for intelligence then it is liberalism it is conservatism and it is uh, religiousness which predict breeding. Um, now this gets this starts to get very interesting. What we found in the book is if you look at at the top uh, quartile of IQ, then you find that people uh, in the, in that top quartile, liberalism is a massive sterilizer. So that people who are in the top quartile of intelligence who are liberal are just residing from the gene pool en masse. Whereas people that are in the top quartile of intelligence who are conservative, who are religious, um, it's not that they're not residing from the gene pool. They are. I mean, they are. They, they, they are. Um, they're not having as many children as they might. But the point is they are having considerably more children than are the liberals. Now, it's not enough, I, mean, I should emphasise, to stem the decline in IQ. It's not sufficient to do that on the part of conservatives but what it, and, and religious. But what it does mean um, is that people that are conservative and religious are sterile to a much lesser extent. And so what you would predict to happen would be that increasingly conservatives would start to become more intelligent and liberals would start to become more stupid. We are in a situation at the moment where we are in a highly liberal society. Um, for various reasons that we look at in the book, society tipped over towards liberalism in about the 1960s. You have these five moral foundations that, that you have that we as a as a group species but as individuals that have to compete within that group because historically only high status individuals within a group would be able to pass on their genes all have five moral foundations you have the individually oriented foundations of harm avoidance i.e avoiding harm to self um, and of equality uh, which, because, of course, if uh, everyone has is, is equal, then you as an individual have proportionately more. So these are the individually oriented foundations. And then you have the group oriented foundations. Uh, that is to say, uh, obedience to authority, in-group loyalty and sanctity. Um, sanctity is as, as opposed to disgust, because this tends to imbricate ideas of seeing outsiders as, as bad and all this sort of thing. So it's, it's group oriented. The heritability of the differences in these traits is at least 0.5. Now, what's been found is that conservatives are are about equal in all of those traits, uh, all of those foundations, whereas liberals are only interested in the individualizing foundations. So liberals are... Now, what, what seems to happen um, is that under harsh Darwinian conditions, we are selected for um, to be highly group-oriented. These start to... Because we're under a group selection against other groups in order to get resources. Um, now, with the collapse of Darwinian selection pressures because of the Industrial Revolution and the collapse of child mortality from 50% to 1%, the result of that is that the huge build up in people that deviate from what would have been selected for under harsh Darwinian conditions, i.e. a huge build up of individualists, of selfish people, are therefore basically leftists, um, who will, of course, because they are leftists, they're individualists, they are, um, they're out for themselves, they're Machiavellian, they want power for themselves, and they will understand that one way that you can get this uh, is by signalling how pro-social you are, how group-oriented you are. So they will signal, overly signal, how group-oriented they are. But we know we have the data on it. They're not really group oriented. They're not really selfless. They're actually selfish. So it's a bit like a person, sort of highest in the UK type, who wants people to see them as posh and therefore goes over the top in signalling their poshness, but is not really posh. But in that sense, they come across as posher than a person, if you like, who is actually more upper class than they are. So you know, they're, they're, they're disingenuous. Now, the result of that is um, eventually a tipping point was reached of about 20% of the population being these individualists. And then 
the whole society tipped over. Um, and once that happens, um, you, you, uh, then people see what the, the, the winning team is. They jump onto it. And then you start to get, uh, in a sense, runaway individualism. More intelligent people understand that the way forward, the way to get power and status and prestige is to force themselves to believe the dominant set of liberal values um, and, then, and, and, and to accept them and to believe them. And they have the ability to understand what's going on, what the dominant set of values is. And they have the uh, impulse control control to force themselves to believe those dominant set of values and then they can competitively signal their acceptance of that dominant set of values and so you get runaway liberalism runaway leftism um, that is uh, that is basically what's happened now the people that are going to be resistant to that are people that are being inculcated with individualism and indeed with not wanting to have children are going to be those that are genetically very strongly conservative and genetically very strongly religious those people will be resistant to that. So what individualism will do um, is bring about a situation where more and more of these individualists don't have children, don't want to have children, um, and more and more intelligent people don't have children, don't want to have children. And so what you are left with then is this genetic core of conservatives and religious people uh, who, who do want to have children. And so they will start outbreeding eventually. Uh, well, they will, they will. They will outbreed. And over time, they will displace um, the, the, the liberals. Now, you have a situation where at the moment... The liberals are more intelligent than the conservatives because of this runaway individualism that we are in, this runaway liberalism that we are in. Liberals are more intelligent than conservatives. At the moment, um, we can say that uh, liberals, that that for every, uh, let's say above average IQ, for every liberal, for every um, one conservative who has above average IQ, there are two liberals that have above average IQ. This is what we find in the data. For every one conservative that has above average IQ, there are two liberals that have above average IQ. Now, what's important is not the, in, in a sense, it is not the percentage of the population that are liberal or conservative. What's important is the percentage of, in terms of cultural dynamics, is the percentage of the elite that is liberal or conservative. Because the, it is the elite, um, a small elite of highly intelligent people can dominate um, a, a mass of much less intelligent people because they are more organised, because they are because they are better at planning, uh, w whatever it happens to be. So it's not what the it's not what the population thinks in terms of understanding pop uh, dynamics, uh, although that is relevant to a certain extent. But much more important is what the elite thinks. Now we don't have the data doesn't have sufficient statistical power for us to be able to go further than that. But if you have it, if you have one. Um, above average IQ conservative for every two liberals, probably as you move up the, you know, the, 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 let's say the top 25 percent or the top 10 percent, it is likely to become more extreme than that. So therefore, liberals heavily overrepresent conservatives among those who are in elite positions. And remember, the heritability of these traits is quite high. But what is happening based on our data and based on a simulation which we look at in the book is that liberals, of very, the higher the IQ the liberal has, essentially the fewer children they have. Um, whereas among conservatives, um, this is much less pronounced. So conservative people of relatively high IQ are significantly outbreeding liberals of relatively high IQ. And what that eventually means is that a tipping point will be reached among the elite, whereby it will, the, the elite itself will tip over into conservatism. Um, now, when that happens, of course, you will get a reversal of the runaway liberalism that you've had since the 60s. You will get that it, it will become high status to be conservative, and then you will get runaway away conservatism among the elite and then ironically it will be those who have less intelligence who will understand less that the dominant new set of values is conservative and, and will have to a lesser extent the impulse control to force themselves to believe these things who will be more liberal and that's what you kind of had in Victorian England. You had you had runaway conservatism and you had a situation where the elite were extremely conservative, extremely puritanical about sex, extremely religious and whatever. And it was the the masses who were considered to be sexually impure and, 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 and you know, basically liberal. So you, you get a, re a return to that. Now, according to our data, uh, fi based on breeding patterns, 50 years from now, it's going to be the other way round. For every one liberal with an IQ of over 100, there will be three conservatives. 
And this will be even more extreme, although, as I say, we don't have the statistical power, but even more extreme the higher up the intelligence hierarchy you go. So what we predict, based on current breeding patterns, is that the right, and indeed the far right, because that's the people that are doing the breeding if you, once you, uh, in, in general, it's the far right and the religious, and then among, we found that among the, the top quartile of intelligence, it's the far rightness and religiousness which particularly predicts um, uh, having children, uh, and it's liberalism which particularly predicts not having children. So what you would expect to happen is that the elite will become ever more conservative far, um, and religious uh, and ever less liberal. And therefore, the liberalism in society will become increasingly associated with people. Uh, I'm talking about native people will become increasingly associated with people like Angela Rayner. There will be a Rayner effect whereby liberals will become more and more and more stupid, while conservatives will become, compared to liberals, more and more and more intelligent. Now, I should emphasise that this is happening in a context of general IQ decline. So it's not it, the the very highly intelligent liberal uh, conservatives of 50 years hence will not be as intelligent as the very intelligent conservatives now. They will be considerably less intelligent than the very than the intelligent conservatives now, because all of uh, 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 whether it's conservatives or liberals, all of them are have dysgenic fertility. It's just that among liberals, dysgenic fertility is worse because what li because because li because liberalism uh, is associated with an ideology which is basically telling you to limit your fertility. Um, and it is also associated with n not believing that life has meaning. It's associated with irreligiousness. It's associated with no sense of eternity. Um, it's associated even with competitively signalling how liberal you are by reducing your fertility. It's it's associated with being selfish and one of uh, and having low agreeableness. And one of the things which predicts wanting to have children is high agreeableness because, of course, it's selfless in a sense to have most of the time anyway to have children because you have to invest in somebody else. Conservatism is associated with high agreeableness, i.e., and therefore wanting to have children because you like nurturing and things like that. So the point to understand is that whether it's conservative or liberal, IQ is going down and will continue to go down. It's just that among uh, uh, conservatives, it is going down less quickly. With the result, considering the heritability of IQ and the heritability of political viewpoint, that gradually what we will see is conservatives um, become sw swapping over with liberals and the conservatives being more intelligent than the Liberals, and eventually very significantly more intelligent than the Liberals, such that we would expect that the elite itself will become conservative, and there will therefore be a movement back towards what we had in Victorian times, which is runaway conservatism. But before you think this is a white pill, it should be emphasised that this will happen in a context of civilizational decline, uh, of the breakup of nations, which always happens in the winter of civilization. The IQ goes down, people are less cooperative, people are less trusting, uh, 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 people become more instinctive even. Uh, and so therefore a breakup of nations, a general collapse. But the point is that there will be I think within our lifetimes, because of the fact that it's the what's important is the elites, not what ordinary people, there will be a change whereby the elite will flip over towards conservatism, and you will therefore see the percolation upwards into the into the elite and the dominance of the elite of sort of Nick Fuentes types. And perhaps the reason why there is such conflict at the moment, in a way that there wasn't when I was younger, um, is precisely because you now have uh, whereas when I was younger, everybody in the elite was basically liberal. Um, and now, because of these processes occurring in the demographic uh, data, uh, you have two sets of elites. You have the conservative, the rising, bubbling, con in, in a liberal dominated society, you have increasingly more and more and more intelligent conservatives. And those people, in a way that you didn't used to. And those people are able to fight and compete with the liberal elite, and that creates polarisation uh, until eventually things flip over towards the Conservatives. And if you'd like to read more about that, then you can, of course, read it uh, in this book. OK, well, thank you for listening. I hope this has been of interest, and I will see you soon. And goodbye!